And so, next up, Amber Crane, Rose City Bike Adventures, talking about kayaking with whales and some of the interesting aspects of this unique element of the industry. Amber, come on up. I will do my best to just plow forward and not cave under pressure. Um, so the reason I'm talking to you today about kayaking with whales is not to tell you about the benefits of it or, you know, if you do welcome to join one of our trips, we'd love to have you, but um, it comes from an underlying pressure that I think we're all facing as an industry, which is the rapid expansion of both technology, of people's interests, and of people's awareness. So let me give you a little bit of an overview of what kayaking with whales is, and then I'll kind of talk about um, how that relates to everybody here. Um, so the really, really cool thing about a kayak is that they're very, very slow. You can't chase whales. You can't go out looking for them in a massive area. Even if you do have radio contact and you know where they are, the chances of actually getting there and trying to see an encounter are very slim. So we operate um, from a perspective of simply going about and putting together the best wilderness experience that we can for folks. And we immerse ourselves in the area, in the world of the whale, and hopefully they want to come and join us. Um, it's, we have, uh, it can take actually days to encounter uh, cetaceans. Um, in the Johnstone Strait, which is one of the areas we operate, I'm sure you're all, all aware of the northern western orcas up there, our trip lengths are four to six days, so we can optimize after even having a chance of seeing them. Now, frequently we'll see them um, many times throughout the tour, but sometimes it can be even just that once. Um, this kind of goes against the instant gratification mentality that many of our guests and many of our modern cultures embrace, but we've actually found that because of that, the infrequency of these sightings in some ways makes them more treasure to people. And it really emphasizes the wildness of the animal. You know, this is not a roller coaster. This is not Disneyland. You don't get to just show up and they're there for your entertainment. And generally speaking, this actually attracts um, guests who really understand and embrace this concept. So they're usually really wonderful people. Um, as, let's see. Uh, and they want to experience the whales rather than just going and seeing them and marking them off the checklist. Um, some of the benefits of a kayak, of course, are the lessened environmental impact. Uh, Carbon-free, no pollution, very little noise. You usually hear the whales long before we see them. Um, you can actually, at times, see them very close. Uh, we never, of course, we respect all regulations, but because you're in a kayak, the whales can choose to approach you. Uh, and that can mean that they come within inches or feet or way out in the distance, and you know, not much you can do about that. Um, but it can really give people the sense that they're almost part of the pod. So it's a very intimate experience for a lot of folks. Um, another benefit, because these are multi-day trips, we have quite a bit of time to educate people, and they're pretty much a captive audience. So we get to teach them about the ecosystem and about the whales and how all of this interacts. You know, so we'll start by having natural history presentations about starfish and then about salmon, and about forest ecology. And by the end of the trip, you'll see how all of that plays into the orcas, or the gray whales, or the lugas, or whatever uh, regions that they're in. And they'll see how this is all an interactive experience. Um, ideally, this makes people think about their relationships to the world and the ocean in a very different sense. Because when you're in a kayak, you're completely vulnerable. There's this much fiberglass between you and the ocean and the animal. And it tends to really change people's perspectives about what's going on. Um, some of the difficulties, of course, is that some people just want that Disneyland experience, and there's not a lot we can do about that. Um, even though we do our best to continually educate them, there are those who will kind of never think that whales are there for any reason except their own. <laughs> I'm watching you. <laughs> um, there are those who really do think that the animals are there for their own entertainment. Um, and the problem with that, of course, is that when they're in kayaks, people can actually move themselves. So we rarely have incidents on guided tours because, you know, I don't know if you've ever met a kayak guide, but you don't really want to mess with them. They're frightening people. But nonetheless, um, those who are out recreationally on their own often are completely unaware of, um, I guess, their impact on the animals. Part of the problem with a low impact situation like a kayak is it's not no impact. And people don't 
always have that cognizance. So in some ways, they are less aware than a motorist who might be out and knows the whale watching regulations. To go in a kayak, most of the time you don't need a permit. You're looking at tides and currents and you're not looking at what cetaceans might be doing. Um, as far as regulations, they're usually the same for boats, which is good and bad. I mean, it's, uh, I definitely believe that we should have, oh, I have to stop yakking now. Yeah. Can I say a final closing you sentence, Your Honor? Okay. Um, the point of this all is to say that we are hoping to develop best practices for kayaking with whales worldwide, but a one-size-fits-all approach isn't always possible. And like I said before, as technology continues to develop, as the internet makes information, all of these kind of secret areas available to everybody now, this is something as an industry that we have to tackle and proactively so that we're moving in a positive direction rather than reacting.